when we talk about chemicals that have the same formula, right, but different structures, well, we're talking about isomers. And we've already talked about isomers um, where we actually took things like, oh, look at this one, one, two, three, four, five. So that's going to be pent, single bonds, that's pentane. And this one's going to be a methyl butane. One, two, three, four is the longest chain. There's a methyl branch on a butane. So that's methyl butane and that's pentane. Those guys are called structural isomers of each other. They both have the chemical formula C5H12 and um, uh, what we can do is we can uh, just take a, a, an end or a carbon from one end and we can relocate it in different positions and those are structurally different from each other. And by the way, it doesn't have to be. We could actually have put maybe an OH at the end here, and that's pentanol. But if we put the OH in the middle, uh, and then we call that pentane 2-all, okay, that's a structural isomer once again. Now, there are different types of isomers, too. They're from, from structural, a little bit more complex. And the first one, well, and those are called, by the way, they're called stereoisomers. Stereo, that's three-dimensional shapes. Uh, stereoisomers are really cool because, um, well, for instance, here is, now take a look at this. There's eth, right? Two, there's a double bond, so it's ene, that's ethene. And let's say that these are chlorines. Okay, so we've got a chlorine, that's a dichloro on the ethene, so it's a dichloroethene, but the, 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 the chloros are on the one carbon and the two carbon, so it's a 1, 2 dichloroethene. Right, so that's what that is. No problem. Okay. So, what's this? Well, it's ethene, dichloro, on the 1 and the 2. 1, 2 dichloroethene. This chemical has different physical and chemical properties than the one that was previous to it. And because their arrangement in three-dimensional space, or their stereochemistry, gives them different properties like this, then we're going to have to call those uh, isomers of each other in a special way, and we have to give a special name, right? Now, and we've touched on this before, but stay with me on this. Because of the fact that this molecule here, if you actually said, well, is it polar or nonpolar, and you've got, let's say that this, car this carbon to hydrogen bond here was in line with this carbon to chlorine bond here, the electronegativity pull from this carbon to chlorine here makes this one more partially negative, but the carbon here more partially negative between it and hydrogen, because hydrogen is less electronegative, then actually you get a bond dipole going this way in this molecule and then this way in this molecule, and no lines of cancellation, or we'll just say that this is a polar molecule. As opposed to, now this molecule can't rotate here. This pi bond, a sigma and a pi bond here, this pi bond prohibits rotation of this molecule. So what happens is that you cannot have at any one time um, both of these forms. What you have is some molecules that will assume the polar form, and this one, because the bond dipoles cancel this way and this way, this is nonpolar. And so, what do we have to do? We have to have a name for the one that's polar and the one that's nonpolar. Now, traditionally, we actually call those, because the hydrochlorines are on the same side in the polar one, we call that cis. So, cis, I like to say because they're sisters and they're on the same side. Sisters should be on the same side, you know. And so this is the cis arrangement here, but if you took that CL and you put it down here and the H up here, that position would be called, they're across from each other, and across, that's easy to understand, that's trans. So this would be called trans 1,2-dichloroethene. The other one was called cis 1,2-dichloroethene, and those were, again, geometric isomers. Geometric isomers, because their geometry is a little bit different here as opposed to stereoisomers that are optically active. Now, that's pretty cool. Now, here's the key with determining whether or, something, whether or not something is what we're going to call here an optical isomer or not. Okay. When you look at these two chemicals and you say, well, are these the same? And you look at it and you go, well, I, I think so. And, and you're right, they are. Now, this carbon, because it has four different groups attached to it, whatever those groups are, maybe it's another C with three H's on it or whatever, when a carbon has three different types of groups attached to it, that's called a chiral center, C-H-I 
C-H-I-R-A-L, a chiral center. And when you have a chiral centered compound, you can have some pretty wild things happen. And watch this. These two chemicals are identical to each other because you see that, that that H is in the same position, those yellows and the oranges here in the same position, and the purples are in the same position there. And those chemicals right there are the same, right? Now, look at this. I take this and I do this. And I just change the position of two of these bonds and I say, are these chemicals the same? And you're going to say, well, they kind of look the same, but you know what? Here's the thing. You can't take these chemicals right now and put them on top of each other and get them superimposed and the same. They're not the same, which is kind of cool. What they are are, if you look at it, just pretend that there's a mirror in between these two chemicals right here. Right? Um, well, if you know what I mean. They are mirror images of one another. Do you see that the purples are in the back, and these yellow ones are in the back here to you, right? And in the front over here, and the green ones are up top. These chemicals cannot be superimposed onto one another. They're mirror images of each other. And because of that, they are called, well, this is called an optical isomer. And optical isomers of each other are called enantiomers. E-N-antiomers. So these enantiomers, optical isomers of each other, have different kinds of properties. Now, you're going to say, well, how can they have too much of different properties? They're, they're functionally the same, and they're still all polar and everything. Yeah, but here's the thing that they do that's really cool. If you take these and you separate them from a mixture of the two of them, and if you, if you undergo chemical reactions, where you're just going to make these chemicals right here, a bunch of substitution reactions to be able to make these chemicals, um, half of the mixture is going to be identical to each other, and probably the other half is going to be uh, 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 optical isomers of each other. Well, if you could separate this racemic mixture, that's what it's called, a racemic mixture is when you have the two optical isomers together. If you could separate them, you would find that one of the chemicals, when you pass light through it, polarizes light entirely differently than the other chemical does. So that's pretty cool. The way that these separate is because they polarize light differently. And so that's why they're called optical isomers, because of how they treat light that passes through their solution. So again, the chiral center, which means a carbon atom that's bonded to four different chemicals, right? If they are superimposable, they're the same. But if they actually are mirror images of each other, then they're optical isomers.